For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother here departed, we therefore commit his career to the archives. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, Twitter apology to Twitter apology. Except, no. <laughs> Alright, quick recap. Sean Cookie is an FNF animator with around 200,000 subscribers who blew up in 2021 with their animations. They started getting flack for copyright striking and flagging down other YouTubers for unfair reasons, and was previously exposed in July when the 19 year old was caught having sexual messages with a 16 year old in their staff chat. Then a document came out from an individual by the name of Born Weird who exposed that Sean sent porn to someone he thought was 16, entered a poly relationship with a 13 year old, allowed someone he thought was 18 to have a relationship with a 13 year old, and sent porn to someone he thought was 13. Sean lied about almost all of this in his response document and basically manipulated the public's view of the situation, and this has all been highlighted in this video which you can watch for more detail. This has now become one of my most impactful and acclaimed videos that I've done, which I thank you all for, and in this video I'm just going to go over everything else that happened as a result of this. This includes new information on Sean as well as just more reactions and responses from different people. Starting with... Now, with the online personality that Sean had previously portrayed, that being an impulsive and vocal individual, I was interested in what my video deconstructing his character would basically do to him, especially with my channel size as well. Now, I expected a flagrantly shitty response trying to refute the points, but at the end of the day, we didn't even get that. Instead, Sean went private on Twitter, started taking down some of his videos, and then ended his career with a pathetic and weak yelp. Hi, I'm just gonna say this because I don't think I can keep this up anymore. I'm going to try and just leave everything behind. I told myself I refused to be cancelled from this, but now it's really got to me. My response it wasn't enough it seems, and I think I'm just gonna quit. To all the people who I've had a blast hanging out with and talking to, I hope for the best and I'll be cheering on the side, wherever I'll be that is. If I make the decision and come back with a better response then I will, but for now I'm quitting YouTube and all my social medias. I'm gonna try to do my own thing outside of the internet and at least try to better myself. I apologise for anything and everything and I still care about you all very much. It's been fun, really this has, but please keep in mind this isn't a goodbye forever. See you guys. Alright, I'm gonna say what we're all thinking here. Pack watch, let's fucking go. No, what I was gonna say is that this response just fucking blows so hard. Let's start from the beginning, you're still playing the victim. You said that you can't keep this up anymore, you refuse to be cancelled from this, and your response wasn't enough, as if there's a sad violin playing in your head whilst you write this shit. It's all about you, you, you. And as much as you'd like to invoke the card, you are not another victim of cancel culture. You completely deserve what's coming for you here, and you are talking absolute bullshit. I don't think a response that so clearly blames the victim is quote-unquote not enough. Then, your apologies. You do not even apologise for anything adequately in this thread. The most you say is, I apologise for everything and anything, which is about as effective as a water pistol being used in a burning building. You have a lot to apologise for, and the fact you didn't on the first attempt just signifies the relevance of the final point, that being your open-ended return. Now, already with that topic, there's a lot we can comment on in this post, but recently I actually got leaks from Sean's private account that confirms his sentiment in a much stronger way. I'm gonna put this here because I need somewhere to vent. Even though people went down and I've lost a lot of people and friends who I've loved, I just hope they can understand that people can change and grow from their mistakes as the years go by. I won't forgive myself for how I acted a few years ago. Losing friends sucks a lot, but being in the FNF community is what made me get somewhere and making friends and making me feel like I belong someplace, people to hang out with, and those who I can call my family. It's so hard to reason with people as a person who has speaking problems, but besides that I just really want to gain all their trust back. I think about this every day, and knowing they don't want to talk to me anymore now, this all feels like a nightmare. Nightmare, a nightmare that I cannot wake up from. Up to this day, it still doesn't feel real, and all those people I've met in the past, well now I know that I've only made friends with the wrong people. I just can't wait to go back to my main soon when I'm ready, and just tell everyone how sorry and idiotic I am slash was. I want to make things right, I do, I just want to be given a chance, because I miss everyone. It sucks to be hiding in this shell that I can't get out of now. I genuinely am sorry for everything. I hope I can be forgiven one of these days, and at least be given another chance to start over and gain their trust again. I, for one, do not want Sean Cookie on his platform again, and I'm, I'm dead serious about this. I know there were conversations in the comments about him redeeming himself and whatever, but fuck all of that. Some degenerate shit that Sean did was brought up, and rather than apologise or admit to anything like that, he's just continued to weasel his way through. I'm 
simply astonished that there are still people out there who support this guy because he's just a sack of shit. And for as much as people despise people like Amarelcha, at least he issued an apology. Yes, it was fake as fuck and probably used to say public face, but it was an apology. This isn't even an apology. This is just fucking disgraceful. Seemingly though, we hadn't got to the worst of it yet because on the 23rd of April, a throwaway account contacted me about an Instagram group chat active before July of 2022. And this group chat basically had a bunch of animators who were minors. The youngest was 13, most were 14 to 16, and then it had three adults, one of which was Sean. Now in this group chat, Sean wouldn't really be talking a lot, but when he did talk, he would post NSFW pictures to the chat that may I remind you, is full of minors, as seen here. Yeah, Sean then posts the picture. Bye. You want me to voice out that Sean? No. Damn, it's okay XD. Speaking of NSFW, oh no. Then he posts another NSFW image. The smiley face. Mmm, please. Oh my lord. Also, this is the drawing my friend did for me. Damn. I screamed and I couldn't stop looking at it. I'm sweating a lot. I don't know why. Self insert. Now I'm asleep. I'm nose bleeding. Ha. It should also be noted that there was a bit of a family dynamic at play in the group chat where he was aware of the ages of the people in the chat, him even referring to them as his children and them referring to him as their dad. You can already tell how dodgy this is really getting and the messages show how they were mildly uncomfortable with it. You want to see another NSFW drawing I did? Sure. Okay. Kicks down door. There's another NSFW image. Eyes emoji. Eyes emoji. Oh my. Eyes emoji. Dad, why are you showing porn of you? What's wrong, my little strawberry? No, but dad, exactly, I'm your father. You shouldn't be flirting with your father. Fine, then I disown you as my dad and now I flirt. Hi, what y'all up to? Whiteboard, I guess. Drawing an SFW. How fun. Yes. And if that wasn't bad enough, Sean would openly discuss playing with himself in the group chat. And as you can see, many people in this chat didn't understand these concepts or thought it was a roleplay slash game. I bonks behave. Rubs head from pain. What? I'm just saying. I'm just twitching still after that huge climax. I can imagine that though. I don't get it. Ack. Okay, good luck. And I have used a toy, right? So I used it and I didn't have any, um, anything to sl just slide in like that, you know? There. Wow. I came back at a good time. H H H. But you needed the lubricant. Wait, I don't get it. Did it feel amazing? Well, at least you had fun, yeah, ooh, ooh. Yeah, it felt good, ha. Huh? I'll just say this. A friend helped me when I went to the house a few weeks back, since I'd never done this before, so now I'm trying to do this on my own, lol. You had it? Sits down. Damn, I got called. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, so like I said before, I have a toy, and I kind of used it on me. I kind of started off going slow, going in with the toy, and so I used the vibrator adding onto it. I used the toy for both parts, and it kind of hurts, but it felt good at the same time. Now that I fi- Oh my god. Now that I finished, I'm just twitching a bit from it. Fuck hell. I'd honestly let you rail me once you turn 18. I have sexy Pico coming in this animation. Do you want it, Dad? Yes, please. It's not done yet. It's not done. Fuck. FFF. It's okay. Take your time. Dad just want to stay up and have sexy Pico, huh? I'm sorry that I don't make a gift for you yet. I'm still sick. Thank you, princess. And it's okay. Don't worry. Awawa. I'm a princess. Smiley face. Smiley face. Moi. Did he just call this, like, child of okay okay dude the discord kitten group chat is real and hey if sending nsfw and discussing self-pleasure in a group chat with people as young as 13 wasn't bad enough already here's another instance in this instance sean was on a call with another adult and apparently just started playing with himself without any drawing or discussion this person then heard him heavily breathing on call and asked what they were doing Putting two fingers in. What the fuck? The other person also made a statement about the situation. Yeah, no. Anything before that is just me sending memes, and after it was me saying I'm getting off the call. I remember I was sending him memes and he was quiet. All I heard was him breathing unsteady. So I asked, what are you doing? And that was his response. I didn't say anything after that. I think I sat in silence because I didn't know what to say and went to sleep, but the call continued on till the morning. When I woke up, I re-saw what he'd said, and that's when I was like, what the fuck? And right after that, I said to him, I told him I'm getting off. So who the fuck knows how long he was doing that for? The reason we called was because he was upset and wanted company whilst he slept. It wasn't uncommon for me to sleep on call with people, and I thought we were close enough so I agreed, but apparently he got too comfy with that. His apology for this, almost a month later and filled with stuttering and immaturity, can be seen here. Hey, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for what I've done to you. I take the blame for being a weird shithead, and if I made you feel uncomfy in any sort of way, forgive me. If you don't want to talk to me anymore, I respect that. I'm so fucking stupid and I, and I just, I'm sorry. Ender told me you spoke to the others about that night in call, and I fucking hate myself for that. I, I'm just gonna go. See ya. So, uh, yeah, this guy is a fucking degenerate. I have privately confirmed the ages of the people in this group chat. But uh, yeah, this creep, Sean Cookie, might be one of the worst I've seen in FNF so far. 
and there's a lot of contenders for that category here. It's just the fact that he managed to get away with stuff like this for so long. All of this shit just fucking disgusts me. Like, Sean Cookie is just a freak, man. That, that That's all I can say. Like, I've, I've covered situations like this before, and I don't have anything new to say, except this guy's just a fucking freak. I stand by my previous position. Do not let this man back into the community under any circumstance. He is a repeat offender of having sexual messages and group chats with minors, as well as sending minors porn. And just before that was posted, I also got to see Sean's manipulation up close and personal. An artist and voice actor by the name of Latte Horrors had recently approached me personally with some DM leaks. When Born With's document first came out, Latte DM'd Sean as he'd initially gone private due to harassment. When asked about what was happening, Sean said this, There's a little dilemma that's going around of me being accused as a groomer when I have not. The person that's been playing the victim is not innocent in this situation either. However, I was young, not that young and stupid, and sent slight NSFW to the person playing the victim. Is it? Was it slight NSFW? I mean, guys, come on. Among Us porn, really? Not much was shown in the image, but I still take full responsibility for that. And then my dumbass, after sending that image to the person, said, I know I shouldn't be doing this because you're a minor, but HHH. Now, people are using out of context and saying I'm attracted to minors, which is not the deal. This person has lied to me about their age on and off, and I literally didn't know what to believe anymore, and even tried to manipulate me into dating them and another minor way below the age of 14. I was very uncomfortable with everything, but I never actually said it to them. That person did their dark whilst I did mine and posted it, but it seems like my doc is bullshit and badly written to other people. Some of my friends were saying it's rushed and I typed it out of anxiety slash worry, so for now I'm letting it die down. I spoke to my friend who took criminology that this is all a shit show and that person playing the victim is doing it to ruin my life and doing it for clout. My friend had even spoke to her brother who is a police officer who had also said the same thing and most likely some high school drama shit. Yes, of course you're like friends in criminology and police don't, don't take the shit seriously because no one's making a legal argument here and if you explain it to them the same way you did here, without mentioning that you sent born weird NSFW whilst knowing they were like 13 or that you let someone you thought was 18 date a 13 year old, of course they're going to say that shit since crucial details have been left out. Also going to mention that my friend has been pointing out the shit they've been trying to hide when they treat to our me, and they've been deleting her messages, so that's another thing. And I have the screenshots that my friend sent of her deleted messages. So now since my response doc is buried in my Twitter with retweets and drawings, people are going to think that I'm trying to get away with it, or that the person that's been accused is in the right. In this next screenshot, Sean just continues to go on about sending NSFW when he thought Bornweed was a 16 year old. He doesn't even address the porn links or anything from when he knew Bornweed was 13 at all, he just brushes right past it again. Like bro, if they were like, uh, why, or no what the fuck, or something like that, and then if I had convinced them into looking at it, then it would be something wrong. But they seem to just go with it. I mean, you're the adult in the situation, considering we're talking about the whole, um... 1619 situation here. You're the adult in the situation. Surely it's your kind of responsibility to moderate a conversation and how sexual it gets. I mean, you are the adult. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you that isn't just repeating my own video. By your own words, Sean, a three-year age gap involving an adult and a minor is possible pedo. That's, that's all I can say. Then Latte showed me a cut paragraph from Sean's document, and honestly, I can, <laughs> I can understand why this is cut, because Fucking hell, this is, uh, ooh, it's awful. Let, let's, let's read it. As something regarding the situation, a factual statement. Two individuals can be in a non-sexual relationship with one another, regardless of age. Of course, if the person is particularly young, that would be a sign of both parental neglect and potentially abuse, but you're a teenager and so is your partner, so there's nothing to worry about in that department. That law only concerns sexual intercourse when it comes to this issue, and the age of consent varies by country and within the US by state. Okay, listen, 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 listen up, okay? Uh, this is not a legal argument. No one is saying that Sean uh, is breaking the law by uh, anything, you know? We're not saying Sean broke the law. We're saying morally he's a fucking degenerate and a creep. Um, and plus, 19 is not even a teenager. Like, if we went with this whole, like, teenager context, you could have a 19-year-old and 13-year-old, and it'd be fine because they're both teens, guys. Jesus fucking hell. I just... I don't know what to say. Here's Sean again just lying about their intentions with these drawings. Yes, I do actually. One sec. Literally nothing here is shown. Was it with sexual intent? Not at all. Sean, it's right there in the top right hand corner of the drawing. Oh my god, what do you think that's implying? Hey, maybe not. Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's the topless character in the forefront blushing with their top off. I don't know. I don't know, man. Listen. I don't know, alright? Maybe, maybe it's sexual intent, guys. I don't know, I'm, I've got a sneaking suspicion it might be. Again, if you have any experience with Sean that's similar to that where he just blatantly lied to you or anything else, please either just contact me in my email 
or Latte Horrors on their socials. I'll leave a link in the description because Latte uh, was expressing that they really wanted to help and I can't, I can't impede that. Uh, and I think it's nice that people are actually coming out and helping about the situation. So yeah, back to the current day. Sean is finally gone. He has said he will be back eventually, but why he wiped everything as fast as he did is beyond me, I just don't know. Maybe he made my shit response thread in a hurry because he saw my tweet and knew the Roblox sex server charge would really stick. Oh, what, you, you don't follow me on Twitter and have no idea what I'm talking about? You're in for a ride. The Sean Cookie video had a sort of chain reaction where other people began to post their findings, memories, and experiences with Sean Cookie, which ranged from everything. You've seen two of the experiences here in the video already. Let's go over the other stuff. Shout out to Yoki Anon on Twitter who actually found out that Sean had been in a Discord server about a Roblox sex game called Astral Society slash Project Astral. And if you had any doubts about it, the Discord link for it is literally discord.gg slash condo. Condo, if you're not aware, is a saying for a Roblox sex game. Someone also called into my live stream and said that Sean Cookie was allegedly into like feet or something, so uh, yeah, do with that information. That's alleged, no proof was shown, but uh, do with that information what you will. Then Alexander Mercenary showed me that Sean had a role in his server called Strip Club Membership. This would basically allow people to access a secret set of channels, one of them being called Pole Dance Room VC. Also, bring up the Sean Cookie Strip Club membership stuff. The what now? Okay, so Sean used to have something in the server called the Strip Club membership. I saw it when I was a mod for him. None of us trial mods or lower mods had access to it, but we knew it existed. We could see the channels, but they were locked. It was labeled something like Sean's pole dance room or something. I remember because Sticky had it and none of us understood why. If I remember correctly, it was a green roll. I don't think it was something that could be readily given, which was a good thing, but it was like question mark, question mark, question mark. And as confirmed by multiple people, this role was given to minors. Do you know if the channel that NCFW content, the role was given to minors. Not sure about the first, but I'm certain on the second. It was a VIP role. I personally never remember stepping foot into one of those VCs. But what about the given the role to the kids part? Is that true? I'm pretty sure that's true. Now, stop me when I get too conspiratorial. A YouTuber, now known for his suspicious behavior with minors, had a private channel only accessed by those who had the role, some of which included minors. A private channel that no one could see apart from a few selected mods and maybe a few YouTubers, and it also was given to minors. Now, I will say I don't know exactly what happened. Maybe this is all being exaggerated by outside sources. Maybe I'm just going full pizza gate here, but this is just more evidence of Sean being a dodgy guy. And considering what I've heard about it, I'm really watching some people closely. I am sad though that the femboy Sean art is gone, considering I have lost gallons of come to it. <laughs> I'd fuck the shit out of that thing, nigga, you can- Actually, on a quick topic of art, I can't believe I actually have to say this, but do not go onto the Twitters of people who drew art for Sean before the video released and say, uh, dude, can you delete this? It's just so unneeded. Let, let the artists decide for themselves, man, I don't care. And actually, this is a good segue into the final topic of public support and mutuals. Just because Sean Cookie's gone doesn't mean I'm letting some of you bastards off the ropes. Now, for quick context, I was obviously not the first person to make a video on Sean Cookie. In fact, Sean directly addresses this in his DMs with Latte. That's what I'm saying, bro, like. Two people has already posted a video on me, and he's trying to get people slash friends slash mutuals that I talk to, to watch it. Now, those two people are Miss EJ Music and Jonah, who had made videos beforehand talking about all this stuff, but out of the two, Jonah was far more vocal, and his video was shared around a lot more, yet his efforts went in vain. For example, he tried to talk about it on the server of Caesar Fever, a gaming YouTuber with over 100,000 subscribers, because Caesar was still directly interacting with Sean. Jonah then got banned for this. Then there's Retro Dubs, a voice actor with over 200,000 subscribers and arguably the biggest perpetrator because Jonah literally talked to them personally about this stuff when it came out. Saw this retweet and I'm curious, what did Sean Cookie do? Yo, yeah he admitted to having a relationship with a 13 year old, investigating it right now, let me send his document. Alright, Sean's doc, I'll explain it in details later, I'm currently talking my friend. Uh, I can't see the first one, but what about the second one? Oh yeah, I archived it. Wait, did he just private it? Did you get it? Question mark. Oh yeah, I got it, sorry I didn't reply. It's okay, I apologise if I came off antagonistic. You're good, do you want me to link a video about Sean? Sure. I know Twitter is ass right now, so I don't know if you got this message. No offense, bro, but why are you still interacting with Sean? The N word literally dated a 13 year old. Did you read Sean's document? Yes, and he was ass, bro. Half the shit was victim blaming. And besides, he literally says, I didn't date a 13 year old without showing proof. 
damn, really wish this N-word didn't do this. And then, despite all of this, and despite directly acknowledging the situation, Retro continued to talk to Sean online. I mean, you were literally warned about Sean, and a video already came out. You've, you've got no one to blame but yourself, lad. And then there's Fudietti, FNF-focused streamer and musician, with around 30,000 subscribers who not only interact with Sean, but had him on the team of their mod called McDeity's Debt Disaster. I must calm myself before food beats my ass. Why the fuck would you tweet this? I saw him at the drawing, nothing outside of that. You're despicable, bruh. Crying emoji. Now, Fudietti is a different case from the last two, because whilst the response from Caesar and Retro were minimal or not even existent, she did at least make a public tweet about the whole situation when everything dropped, probably because Sean was working close with her. Hello everyone, after much deliberation, we've decided that Sean Cookie will no longer be working on Debt Disaster nor associating with us anymore. Please understand. However, she had a lot of people on her ass for a number of reasons. It took a whole last Toastify video to come out before you considered evidence on what bro did that had been doubt for a long time, and being dicks to other people who called it out. I don't understand jack shit, dog. I believe the information in the Toastify video was presented in a way that was easily digestible and easy to understand. I don't think staying silent on the matter until the information was presented in a more clear way was inherently bad. I personally decided to stay silent. Most of the discourse on Twitter was a lot of he said, she said and back and forth arguments, and the timeline wasn't presented clearly. It may have taken a while to come to this conclusion, but it was ultimately the right one. No one pressured us into this. I'm glad you all saw everything that finally happened, and I understand waiting for the video. Just think maybe a bit of the information should have been taken into account beforehand. It was, but you gotta understand Sean was a closer friend, and he was telling us that stuff was taken out of context and a lie. It's hard to take stuff like that at face value when there are two wildly conflicting things being said, especially if it's a best friend. We're not talking about Twitter mutuals or something surface level, the best I could do was stay silent and just wait and see what happens. This is the only thing I'll say about the situation, but I do not understand how people aren't grasping that a lot of people who were very close friends of Sean needed something like a Toastify video to truly understand what was going on. This isn't a simple case or just willfully ignoring information just because we felt like defending a groomer. For me personally, Sean came to me about the situation before the document against him even was dropped. I was told he was being blackmailed before the situation was public. Toastify's video did a great job of presenting the information in a way that made sense and was easy to understand, but you also gotta understand it's their job to dissect information like that. A lot of us are adults or just busy people who do not have the time to cross-reference every single point in the document. Sean was someone who I'd give my last dollar to. There were many days where I gave him the last of my money in my account because I wanted him to eat and I would starve because I cared so much. A lot of things didn't make sense about this situation and when people are raiding servers, harassing you, sending gore, death threats and a bunch of other stuff because you're being a victim of emotional manipulation, it can make things so hard. I've thrown up, broken down, and got so fucking upset that I let someone like that so close to me. As a victim of SA, do you not understand what I've been through mentally realising someone I was close to did those things, and I've been toyed with again? It's not good, lol. You've got me all the way fucked up if you think I would allow someone I truly believe was a danger to be that close to me. And through all of that, I still decided to stay silent, until he fully addressed and disproved things on his own. It may have taken a while to get a public response out of me, but I've been taken advantage of in ways Twitter will never even fully understand. I have been manipulated and used. I am beyond distraught, so please do not rope me in as a Sean apologist. I never was. Not attacking food, but I do want to say something really quick. There was zero blackmail involved with this. No one involved with calling him out went, pay me $200 or else I'll post this, or anything of a similar calibre, which means Sean Cookie lied again. It was more so he said that the person who made the doc wants to be his friend, and since Sean said he didn't want to be friends, then he was threatened to have the doc dropped on him. I was told Tristan's doc was pre-written, I was told this in private. Like, the victim allegedly wanted to be friends again, but Sean didn't, and that's why the doc was dropped. Now, I'm going to say this. I think Fudietti's take is completely fine. I saw a lot of people attacking food for some uh, stuff like this, and there were many replies. I think Fudietti's fine in this situation. Now, I wouldn't make this exception for any other situation, but for this one specifically, I can kind of understand. Not only was Sean a close friend, according to Fudietti, but these Sean Cookie documents back and forth were just confusing as all hell. I mean, both for Born Weird and Sean, their documents did not follow a strict linear timeline, which made it really hard to look into. When I first looked at it, I thought Sean was innocent, and to people like that taking a passing glance at it, I can understand why they'd think the same. It's a very complicated situation, there's a lot of finicky bits in it, and yeah, listen, I know some of you will disagree, but I think Fudietti's hate was undeserved, and I don't think they did as much as people are saying that. I certainly don't think they're a Sean apologist, unlike people like Retro Dubs, who was actually, like, alerted to this situation and agreed with it. 
there's there's bigger fish to fry, I think. So in conclusion, Sean Cookie, fucking loser. Throw him into the FNF Predator Pyre. Another FNF Predator gone, another W for Toastify in the Toastify community. Let's go! Before I end this video, I just want to make one thing clear in my videos since this has started to come up a bit. Let me be clear, I am not making these videos to crowd please or coddle the entire FNF community. I'm here to document DGENs, I'm here to expose people, I'm here to take away their reputation, I'm here to take away their platform. But I am not here to hold this community's hand and tell them who and who isn't a predator. Because from recent comments, it seems some of you are starting to abandon your ideals because you think other people will take it off your hands. I'll see a situation come up and then I'll have my people saying, Toast fight, please! Toast fight, please tell me what to think, please! Listen, I'm still 17 whilst making these videos. How the fuck am I being heralded as one of the most mature people in an online community? Either I'm the most experienced man ever, or some of the adults here need to start acting like them. And if you think I'm being an egotistical prick for this, I'm sure the record will justify it. Until next time, stay toasty.